As in the previous module where we discussed about the data, we talked about the information, that without information, without this data, we cannot perform a statistical method. A data comprises of a lot of different information and we call such information as variables or constants as well. But since in statistics we are more interested in hunting out the variations, definitely we want to look at the variables. If you observe a characteristics, we find it takes different values and any characteristic that varies across individuals or population of our interest is called a variable. Like you take diastolic blood pressure of multiple patients coming into the hospital. Not all the patients coming to a hospital have the same diastolic or systolic blood pressures. Heart rate. Every individual has a different heart rate. Heights of adult males. Some are shorter, some are taller, some are of medium height. Every individual that comes into our population or as a part of our sample, they have a different information which brings in the variation and any variable that contains this variation is called a variable. Similarly, age of patients seen in a medical facility is also not the same for all the individuals recruited in a study. Variables are mainly of two types. They are quantitative and qualitative variables. Quantitative variables are further divided into two different categories. Some are discrete variables and some are continuous variables. Quantitative variables are usually known as measured variables. These are numeric variables which contain some magnitude of every observation it takes. Measurements made on quantitative variable convey information regarding the amount of some value. Since we already talked about that quantitative variables are of two types, discrete variables and continuous variable. Discrete variables are the ones that have gaps in its possible values. These gaps are, can also be known as the jumps in the value. Where these jumps and these gaps indicate the absence of values between particular, particular possible values of our variable. Discrete variables are also known as accountable variables. Let's take a few examples of discrete variables, like number of pages in a book. These could be one, two, three, four. But there's no observation between one and two, two and three, and so on. Shoe size. It could be five, five and a half, six, six and a half. There's this perception when they say that any variable that cannot take decimal values is actually a discrete variable. But I personally think this is not the way it is. Discrete variables can take the values at certain decimal points. But the idea is that from that decimal point, they do not take any other value. Like in the case of shoe sizes, when it is five and five and a half, which is 5.5. These are the standard values. There is no value like five and a quarter or 5.35 and so on. Similarly, there's another example of number of teeth per child in a school. That could vary. You always count one teeth, two teeth and so on. We don't say 1.5 or 1.25 teeth. Continuous variables are the variables that takes on each and every value within an interval. These variables do not pose gaps in their possible values. The continuous variable have certain limitations of the measurement. That's why we still observe the continuous variable as kind of discrete point, at discrete points. Few examples of a continuous variable is the height of a person. 
or the weight of a person or the blood pressure of an individual. Qualitative variable is another type of variable. A qualitative variable is the one that cannot be measured in numerical forms. These are the non-numeric variable where each single individual value of our variable is a category. Therefore, these variables are also known as a categorical variable or attributes. Let's take a few examples of these variables. Like when we measure height, it's from low to high. It takes on each and every possible value within this interval. Science aptitude can also be low or high. Within these two intervals, it takes each and every value. Prices of houses. All these three variables are quantitative variables, which can be numerically measured. Whereas categories of different types of trees or categories of different types of aircrafts, categories of different types of animals are qualitative variables. Sometimes we measure inherently quantitative variables as qualitative variable to increase the response rate in our survey, possibly, or for some other, to achieve some other goals. Like, age is one of the very common variables that's, that's inherently quantitative, but we do measure it as a qualitative variable. We often measure age as less than 5 years, 5 to 18 years, 19 to 30 years, 31 to 60 years, and above 60 years. We make following categories for our quantitative variables. While, while, while making such transformation from quantitative to qualitative, one should be very careful about it. This is something that we decide beforehand. Because it's very easy to convert a quantitative variable into a qualitative variable at any time point. But once the data has been obtained as a qualitative, it's very difficult to bring it back as a quantitative variable. There are a lot of loss of information that happens when we treat our quantitative variable as a qualitative variable. Therefore, it's always recommended that if a variable in, is inherently quantitative, it should be measured as a quantitative variable. Because we can always convert a variable into a qualitative vari variable. But it's not always possible to convert a qualitative variable back to its original quantitative context.